good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar on reinforced concrete design. Uh, my name is Yurai from Idea Statica. Uh, before we get into it, we are using GoToWebinar. Uh, you have a panel on the right. You can adjust your audio settings and uh, uh, there is a field for questions. During the webinar, feel free to type in any questions and we will cover them uh, continuously in the chat and uh, uh, several of those questions after the examples at the end. Or if you have any problem, type it in. Today we have uh, uh, my colleagues Alexander, Viet and also Jaroslav will be joining us. Uh, we are uh, from Idea Statica, uh, product engineers uh, we do with uh, with projects of our clients, we help them to uh, uh, do safe design according to Eurocode and we also support Swiss national uh, uh, code or building practice. Uh, we will cover four examples today. Uh, first one is about reinforced cross-section. We will show um, capabilities of, uh, of uh, reinforced cross-section design. Uh, we will have a, a design of beam uh, to, to demonstrate uh, how to do that. Uh, third example is Corbel and fourth is uh, an L-shaped column. Uh, before we jump into the examples, just a quick intro about us. Uh, uh, we develop software for structural engineers. It's called Idea Statica. Uh, our development team, uh, some of the guys have over 20 years of experience. Uh, we helped to build structures all across the Europe uh, and uh, uh, we continue to do so. Uh, we are software dedicated to structural design and code check of cross sections, beams, joints and details. Uh, we have over 1,000 licenses worldwide. We work a lot with the universities to validate the results and uh, we link Idea Statica to uh, various programs of, uh, of daily practice. And today will be about to show you how to make your project safe, compliant, but also how to make the, uh, the reinforced pre-stressed concrete design fun and, uh, and easy. Uh, you all are using a good tool to do that, uh, uh, to help your work already. It's a finite element analysis program or CAE program. Whether it is SAP 2000, Nexus VM, uh, CI engineer, you know these tools and they are great. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, they focus on the model uh, of the whole structure. Uh, they analyze the structure as uh, uh, in all its integrity. And this is a good approach. The only drawback is that when something happens in the structure, it usually is related to structural defects of details. That means uh, particular beam cross section. Uh, and this leads to either solve the problem in the design process, that means spending more time on it, or uh, wasting material, put more reinforcement there. Uh, that's why we created Idea Statica, which deals only with details. We do not aspire to design the whole structure. We focus on cross sections, beams, and details. And today we will we will show that in a series of these examples. Uh, okay, let's jump into it. I will hand it over to uh, my colleague Veed for our first uh, RCS example. Good afternoon, everybody. So we will proceed to do our first part of our first example. We will show our visual design input of cross section, reinforcement, and assessment in Idea Statica RCS. In first example, we defined three cross sections with three different reinforcement. In the first step, I will show you just how simple we can add a T cross section. We'll put input some data. We will input the reinforcement, uh, we can use a template or you can share your template with your colleague in the company. You can input uh, number of the bars, diameter of the bars, diameter of stirrups, everything is editable. You can evaluate your current assessment 
and here is the overall check. We will proceed to another cost section. Here we have simple T with the houses on the web. And uh, as you can see, uh, in the results of the shear, which I want to show you, uh, we have the area of the shear reinforcement is calculated in the CCS centroid in the directional perpendicular to the uh, resultant of the shear force. Here we have the resultant. And it's interesting when we add another in internal force, for example, 10 kilonewton meters here, and we will go back to results, we can see that uh, the area of stirrup is reduced with the respect to the angle of inclination of stirrup branches from the resultant of the shear force. The resultant is a little bit angled due to 10 kilonewtons that, me, uh, that we inputted uh, for a minute ago and it's reduced. The effective width BV, the smallest of the one, uh, which are found between resultants of compression in concrete and tension in steel, which is these places. Uh, uh, I will show you the uh, we can we can uh, easily decrease this uh, effective width by, for example, adding um, a free duct of the pressing tendon. Just give me a second. I will add a new duct to the bottom of the cross section. Here we have it. And if we go back to results, we can see that our effective width is decreased by the diameter of the free duct. In the section number three, I want to demonstrate you that we can have also faced cross section. Uh, we have T with hunches on the web and on the, on the slab. Uh, the yellow part is the first phase, the blue part is the second phase, and in the phase one we have only this part, and we calculated uh, the reduc reduction for each stirrup branch uh, by the uh, by the Anchorage length, we decreased the yield of stress for every single stirrup. We will proceed to the second part of our first example uh, and we will talk about one cross section, uh, simple T with haunches on the web and about the, about the shear assessment. If we go to the reinforcement and add uh, reinforcement without any help in the program, make the current assessment, we will see that our assessment is not all right. Uh, we have almost 190%. We can go, and I want to show you that uh, total mass of reinforcement in this uh, cross section is 17 kilograms per meter. If we go back to reinforcement, turn on this design feature and make a new design of uh, reinforcement, uh, program will add this table and it, immediately we can see the area of design reinforcement and area of provided reinforcement and the ratio beneath them, between them. Uh, this will help us to do efficient, uh, more efficient uh, design and imme immediately you can see we are almost here 102%. We will go to results and 
I will explain you another feature. Uh, the program calculated the angle of um, the angle of compressed strut in concrete by 45 degrees. We can turn on the optimiza optimization and the program will calculate the optimum angle between uh, the compressed strut. We will add uh, 25 degrees and now we in shear we are okay and in the interaction knot which is uh, the stress in the longitudinal reinforcement we will go to reinforcement and add a new design and now it's everything green everything is okay now I want to show you the uh, total mass of reinforcement in the cross section. We are here at 70 kilograms and we are okay in every single check, every single assessment. And as you remember, a few minutes ago, we have 17 kilograms total mass reinforcement in the, cro in the cross section and we are not, we weren't okay. I will proceed to third part of our first example. Uh, I want to demonstra demonstrate here uh, that uh, we have two, one cross section with the different reinforcement and the different uh, results. First of it is the is this one. We have typical T section with a quite thick web and this kind of reinforcement. If I made the calculation, you can see that our shear value is almost 100% uh, and our capacity NMM is almost 40%. If I will go to another cross section, which is almost the same, but we uh, design these three bars, just bend it up, and I will calculate it again. You can see that we are here at 30% and here too. So we, we use this feature to optimize the design and we can save a little bit of reinforcement. This is the end of our first example and I uh, want to pass, uh, pass the presenter to my colleague Alexander. Hello everybody, thank you for the screen. I will continue with the number two. We will try to uh, design and calculate a 3D beam. So we start with the statica beam, with a new type of beam, take a reinforcement concrete beam, continues with top surface and bottom surface for the supports. We will click next. We will take straight or polygonal beam loaded in 3D with two spans with both three meters. Next. And take the cross section with 300 to 500 millimeters with permanent load minus 3 kN per meter and variable load with 5 kN per meter. So we'll click finish. And the program is preparing for us all structure. We can see the cross section, the materials, concrete C25 to 30, and we go further to members and we will try to rearrange the beams to have a nice space beam. So we will give put here in three meters and zero 
and we'll change the supports the ends so and we are ready to to calculate it now we go in the navigator to the load cases you see we have uh, permanent loads and exclusive loads and we can go further to combinations you see the program is has already prepared for us all combinations we need so we don't have to put it manually everything is prepared by the computer so then we go to calculate in the upper ribbon and we see now reactions deformations in axonometry and also in uncored view you see 2.9 millimeters were calculated here for us internal force is 2 so the next step we have to do is to prepare our reinforcement but first of all we can see what kind of data we will use for the calculation so we will see detailed calculation for deflection detailing exposure classes and so on go further to reinforcement and the program is preparing for us two zones of reinforcement above the in the middle and then the both ends uh, in that case uh, it's not it's very good to show our moments and epsilon and you see the zero point of the moment is uh, a little bit different from the point what uh, the program offered us so we will change the zones from 1.5 meters to 1.7 and also here in the middle so I think this this looks much better than before and we go to the module reinforcement and preparing our enforcement for both sections for the section A here we see our window with bars and stirrups and uh, the program is offering us already six upper bars and four lower bars and one in the middle we can of course here change for example the number six to number eight and here in the, in the button section we can calculate and you see the program is calculating for us the best numbers of bars we can have for this section so this is the one uh, first uh, section we can of course change it and say for example in the middle we do not have to need a bar so we will change it to this type of reinforcement we will go to the section D and make the same same design here you see the program is offering us four upper bars and four lower bars well so we are we have reinforcement in both sections we can refresh our data and make the calculation now we see here in the right tab that the detailing is not correct we have 103 percent so there's something wrong with our calculation with our enforcement we can look at the results here in the but at the button you can see in the detailing what's wrong and we can see maximum distance of stirrups are 200 millimeters but we have we should have maximum 193 millimeters so we go back to the reinforcement and again we will change it from 0 0.20 to I would say 0 0.175 okay 
and the same we will do in the section B. We can do it, of course, this in this way, then you click on the stirrups and change it here in this table. Here again, 175, uh, sorry, 175, 175, okay, refresh the data and make again the calculation. And you see everything is in the green, in the green. As we have the reinforcement, uh, if the cross section is more complicated, we have the possibility to export it to the DXF file. For example, in this, I will show it how it works. Excuse me. Now we go to another program and can load the DXF file directly to CAD compute software. Open. And you see everything is here on the screen. So we go back to the reinforcement and go back to our main program, go further to deflection. You can see here what we are going to calculate and make a calculation of deflection. So our results, deflection check, and you see here the total total deflection. And you can see also here the values in the button. Then we can go to report and we have possi the possi possibility to see a, a short report or the detailed where you can see all the data we have calculated. So it was the first, the second example and the third example will be a corber. We'll start again with new. And again, in the navigator, we will continue from top to bottom, project data, materials, you see concrete C25 to 30, reinforcement B to 500B. Then we go to geometry. We can change the cross section from 500 to 800 to 800 millimeters. We will a little bit change the upper part and make, for example, 600 to 800 millimeters and change the distance from column face in the bearing area, not for 200, but here the, this, this number to 400 millimeters. Then we can go to enforcement here in the right table you can define your bars, 60 millimeters diameter, length, and so on. Then the primary framing bars, vertical stirrups, horizontal stirrups, and everything you see, you can look at it in the axonometric view and together everything can you you can see all these things in this way and also this view you can export to the Excel file. Okay, and again you can open it and you see everything was transported to 
CAD software. So then we can go to the road items and we see we have here 100 kilonewtons and 500 kilonewtons. You can add a new case, for example 150 and minus 500, 450 kilonewtons and make the check. And you see something has to be changed. So we will be, you can see the calculation is here is correct. So it was the it was the example number three and I will change over again to wheat. Thank you, Alexander, for passing me the presenter. Uh, we will proceed with the fourth example of our webinar. We, pre we prepared for you uh, our assessment of uh, some parts in the 3D hall of our rainforest concrete. Uh, uh, we basically export this data via our BIM connection from Axis VM. We can import data from Axis Minas, Dubal, Nexus, CR Robots, Sub 2000. Uh, here we have the selection, and for me to speed up, I will only uh, choose the columns and push OK. Uh, to speed up the presentation, I will open uh, this which I prepared in advance. This is the whole, this is the whole structure. We imported uh, the geometry and the internal forces. In advance, I prepared two uh, design groups, uh, one with four, with four non-prismatic columns, which is column with two different cross sections along the length and second design group is this edge columns which are L-shaped. Now I will prepare a next design group for another corner columns. Column C3, I will choose the member type the column and select columns. I prepared this uh, design group, this columns. Now I will proceed to member 1D forces. I want to show you uh, one of the forces which we imported from the uh, axis. We can discover the whole forces in the local and principal axis in the 3D or in un uncoiled view. Further, we will proceed to the reinforcement and we will apply a reinforcement to our L-shaped column. For this, I want to use our template you will input the number of the bars, diameter of the bars, diameter of the stirrups, distance between stirrups. We also want to export it to the DXF just to see and use it for a drawing. can see everything is here and we, uh, if we need we uh, can use it for another drawing in the future. I will go back again to our beam. 
here I want to make five, div five divisions along the length to see more precisely the results and I will calculate all. Here you can see the usage of our reinforced concrete section along the length for the column number C3, for the column C2, which I prepared in advance, is the almost the same, and for the column C1, which is non-prismatic, you can see it right now. I want to show you uh, design members. We can we can uh, visualize our usage of uh, reinforcement in groups on of every single group of of members. We can have our bill of material for every uh, reinforced cross section. You can see length of the bars, weight of the bars, and concrete members. You can have standard report with standard information and detailed report. If you are not satisfied with the uh, content of the report, of course, you can choose what you really want. For example, result classes, drawings, large, normal, bill of material, design member area, and so on. Then you have to refresh and let the program get a second, and immediately you have everything that you want. You want, if you want to use this as uh, input for your uh, reports, you can also save it to MHT file and edit it in a Microsoft Word or some writing, writing program. Here is the reinforced L-shape cross-section. Uh, this is all uh, of our, from our fourth example and I want to make presenter URI again. Thank you, Viet. Uh, before we jump into questions, um, after the webinar there will be a short survey uh, kindly fill it out. Uh, we will send the recording by Friday uh, to your email address and feel free to try these examples you saw by yourself. Request a 14-day trial at our website or indicate that in the in the survey. Uh, we have uh, uh, several webinars coming in. Um, soon uh, the closest two ones are what is new in Idea Statica 8.0, the 7th of March, what is new in steel, uh, 9th of March, uh, what is new uh, in concrete. We'll be happy if you, uh, if you join us. Uh, let us check uh, the questions we have. Uh, let's get into them. Alex? Thank you. Thank you. I will show you my screen, we have got some questions. The first question is uh, regarding torsion. How is the equivalent thin wall cross section in the calculation defined? It belongs to the uh, to the question to the to the second type what we that's what I presented. So if you want to see how it, it's calculated, go again to the, to the 
part of reinforcement, we see the results and go here in the button to torsion and you see we have got here equivalent thin wall section and you can of course we have you have the possibility to change it you can use your user settings for torsion and they, it's created from rear straps or you, you can calculate it from area and perimeter or you can make a manual input and of course this this effects of torsion are added to the flexure so this is the question number one and the question number two is influence of angle of concrete compression struts to the longitudinal bars so I think it's a question to for wheat so I wheat maybe can can take it over and and tell you what's how is the answer about it thank you Alex will be a second. I will show you the second part of the example in which I deal with the shear force and uh, I manually and with the program uh, manipulate with the strut optimization feature which allows me to change the angle of concrete compressed strut. Uh, uh, if we change this angle we will decrease the force in the stirrups and increase the force in the longitudinal bars uh, and then we will maybe have problems with the assessment of uh, interruption and stress limitation so after that we have to make a new design of the reinforcement so we basically uh, switch the force from the stirrups to reinforcement by the manipulating with this angle. Uh, it can be used for more efficient and more economical uh, design. And that's for all I think. We don't have any other question. We? Yep. Uh, it seems that we covered all of them. Uh, if you have more questions, just send us an email or question at our website. We will be looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for spending time with us and looking forward to see you at uh, one of our future webinars. Have a good day. Bye-bye.